Are you worried about guys like this or this DDoSing you? Well, me too, which is why I'm going to use AI to prevent DDoS attacks. Time to do some major hack shit and open up Wireshark. And then, let's click on Ethernet. This is going to collect all the packets, however it will take a while, so I'll come back in a few hours. After what felt like an eternity, we now have 3.8 million packets, meaning that we can save it as a CSV file and get down to the fun stuff. Stage 2. Coding. For this project, I'm going to use something that's called time series analysis. This means that I'm going to calculate the number of connections from the data I've just collected per minute, and then we'll create a graph, which we're hoping it will look something along the lines of this. Time for a super epic coding montage. Right, and we are back, so let's see how it turned out. And remember, this is a reference photo that we were going for. Okay, so let's go through and run all of this. So let's import the libraries, make the panda data frame, uh, then we're going to create a header of the first three rows. Sorry, first nine rows. We'll add all the connections together for the same second, and then we were going to make a graph that X is time and Y is the connections per second. Okay, there we go. And finally, let's have a look at what the seasonal decomposition looks like. And there we go. As you can tell, it isn't exactly what we're going for. Now, I have two ideas for how this potentially went wrong. One, the issue was that I did it in seconds instead of minutes. And two, I didn't collect the data long enough. So I only collected it for three hours on a home network. So there's a good chance that there was nowhere near enough data. So the option that I chose to do was the first one. This is because it's a lot simpler since I've already collected the data. And after going through the Excel spreadsheet and converting it from seconds to minutes, I could then rerun the program and see whether it had improved. Slightly editing the program led me to get these two graphs, and as you can see, it's a lot better than what we had before. However, it isn't exactly like the reference image. But after having a look around, I found a master's thesis on DDoS detection using time series analysis by Pavlos Platanius, which my trend graph shared a few, but not many, similarities with. So you might be wondering, why didn't I opt for option 2 and get a large database such as this one here to be able to create a much more accurate trend graph? And I have a good reason for this. This is because I want to launch two denial of service attacks on my own network. One from my own computer, and the second a DDoS attack from the dark web. And after plugging my computer into my switch and my Wi-Fi adapter, that is exactly what I did by starting an application named HPing3. After writing this little prompt, I opened up Wireshark to start collecting the packets and then clicked enter. My DOS attack had officially started. I wanted to show how fast that it was causing my switch lights to flicker, however the frames per second were too low to do this. Also, as a side note, it managed to crash my Wireshark and then, obviously because I was doing a DOS attack, it managed to crash my Wi-Fi and I wasn't able to use it. And my parents, who work from home, also weren't able to use it. Do 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 do. Oi, why is the Wi-Fi not working? Um. Anyways, at the end of that, we ended up with 2.8 million packets after only 15 minutes of collecting. And if you compare that to the start where we had around 3.2 million packets over three hours, it's about 10 times the amount of packets every minute, which is obviously a DOS attack. So let's see if my program can pick it up. First up, we have a correlation graph, and as you can see, towards the start, it has a lot stronger correlation, and it hit zero just around the 10 mark. This made me decide that I was only going to predict the first 10 values, and I wanted to test my predictions versus my actual results, which shows this graph here. As you can see, the first three or so points are pretty accurate, and then very quickly it tails off the actual graph. After this, I predicted what the next 10 minutes might have looked like, and then, I compared this to my DDoS results, and using something called a root mean square error, I was able to compare the two results. The idea is that if the root mean square error for DDoS is over two times greater than the root mean square error for the predicted, then it will trigger a DDoS alert. For the predicted root mean square error, 
I ended up with just over 2,000. And then for the DDoS route mean square error, I ended up with over 180,000. So safe to say it triggered the DDoS alert. I went on Google to download Tor from the website, and then I opened it from my desktop. I quickly found a site selling DDoS attacks. However, very quickly, I noticed a problem. FBI, open up! 